The head-to-head -head battle of the 2020 Acer Predator Helios 300 versus the 2020 Asus Zephyrus G14 has arrived, and I have run each of these laptops through 14 plus creator-focused benchmarks, covering video editing, Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, motion design, graphic design, photo editing, 3D modeling, and a whole lot more. We're going to find out if the Asus Zephyrus G14 or the Acer Predator Helios 300 is the right laptop for your needs. Let's get rocking. If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're going to find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. Also, if you're curious about the exact pricing of either one of these laptops, as we're heading through the video, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do use that link to make a purchase, we'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Jumping right into the build of both of these laptops, they both have very different appearances. The Helios 300 with its glowing Predator emblem symbol and the Asus Zephyrus G14 with its matte white LED infused top cover. Concerning the build quality, my vote swings towards the Zephyrus G14 with its aluminum top cover, bottom cover, and keyboard deck. The Helios 300 is aluminum as well, but just not on the bottom cover, which is where the Zephyrus G14 excels. Regarding the ports on each of these laptops, I always encourage people to think about their own use cases. The latest and greatest ports are great, but only if they fit your needs. So observe the ports shown here and choose wisely. As I open the lid on each of these laptops, I am able to do so with one hand. The hinges are smooth and strong. There's only a slight bit of screen flex that is equally present on the Zephyrus G14 and the Helios 300. I would rate the hinges as a tiebreaker. Both are solid and sturdy. Before we move on to the screen quality, I want to discuss the ventilation on these two laptops. Both the Zephyrus G14 and the Helios 300 have generous vents for cooling these laptops. They both have vents on the bottom cover, behind the keyboard deck, and on both side panels. However, the Helios 300 also has a vent on the top of the keyboard deck, which we will find later in the video increases the ability for it to run cooler than the G14. How noisy are these fans and how well do they do cooling the laptop during the benchmark tests coming up later in the video? At idle, the Helios 300 kicks onto 37 decibels, whereas the G14 gets a bit louder at 43 decibels and remains there for the most part while doing some light web browsing. During the 4K video editing export in Premiere Pro, the Helios 300 ramps up to 51 decibels and the Zephyrus G14 gets a little louder at 60 decibels. During the DaVinci Resolve export, the fans on the Helios 300 were at 55 decibels and the G14 was at 59 decibels. Now for the Photoshop benchmark test, the Helios 300 was at 51 decibels and the G14 at 61 decibels. Now to check how well the fans did cooling the components during these different benchmark tests. Here are the benchmark results. All right, now that we have covered those details, let's get into the screen quality. The Acer Predator Helios 300 comes with a 15.6 inch Full HD 16 by 9 display that can reach 144 hertz at three milliseconds of response time. At full brightness, it can reach 310 nits with a color gamut range of 97% sRGB, 77% Adobe RGB, and 77% DCI-P3, all at an average Delta E of 1.86. For a gaming laptop, this is a fantastic screen, but I must say the G14 is equally impressive. The Asus Zephyrus G14 comes with a 14-inch Full HD 16x9 display that can reach 120Hz. At full brightness, it can reach 330 nits with a Pantone validated color gamut range of 96% sRGB, 75% Adobe RGB, and 76% DCI-P3, all at an average Delta E of 1.27. The Zephyrus G14 comes with a standard basic keyboard layout, whereas the Helios 300 comes with a keyboard that includes a numpad. 
Personally, I prefer the non-numpad keyboards, um, but both keyboards are nicely laid out and have good key press. It is soft and snappy. However, I will say that regarding the backlighting, the Acer Predator Helios 300 is definitely the clear winner in this category. It has consistent, bright keyboard light that offers great contrast for easily identifiable keys in dark settings. The Zephyrus G14 has light leaks on the sides of the keys, inconsistent backlighting showing through the keys, and in the dark, this silver gray contrast is a little tough to see when typing. But if you took a typing class in college, then there is no need to look at the keyboard, right? So how it feels beneath your fingers is the only thing that truly matters. Well, I'll let you be the judge of that. Both the Asus Zephyrus G14 and the Helios 300 come with all-in-one trackpads, with the click built into the trackpad. I will say that I favor the Helios 300 trackpad, as it is much larger than the G14s. Now, it is right to consider that the G14 is a whole 1.6 inches smaller concerning the screen, which takes away from a good portion of the available measurements for the keyboard deck, which is where the trackpad sits. But nonetheless, I like its size more, that is the Helios 300. Um, however, both trackpads have a nice, smooth, firm click when pressed, an accurate click, as well as touch gestures. So either way, you will be satisfied with the trackpad, but if you have watched a lot of my reviews, you know that I'm a big fan of the Helios 300's trackpad. I have said and continue to say that it is one of the best gaming trackpads that I have seen on a gaming laptop that I've really ever used. If you are needing a laptop to attend virtual meetings, then you are going to want to select the Helios 300, as it is the only one with a 720p webcam in this head-to-head -head battle. Concerning the on-the-go capability of these two laptops, the Asus Zephyrus G14 weighs in at 3.53 pounds at a thickness of 0.7 inches, whereas the Helios 300 weighs in at 5.51 pounds at a thickness of 0.90 inches. Concerning the battery life, the G14 will get roughly nine and a half hours of web browsing battery life and six to seven hours of design and video editing life out of its 76 watt hour battery. Whereas the Helios 300 will get roughly five to six hours of web browsing battery life and maybe two to three hours of design and video editing with its 59 watt hour battery. If you're enjoying this video and getting some value, gently press down on that like button and let me know how you plan on using this laptop by dropping a comment in the description below. If you want more content like this in the future, then make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. All right, let's get back into this video. On to the main event, the performance benchmark test between the Asus Zephyrus G14 and the Acer Predator Helios 300. The Asus Zephyrus G14 I'm reviewing comes with the AMD Ryzen 9 4900HS with 8 cores and 16 threads. The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 Max-Q with 6 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM, 16 gigs of GDDR4 RAM upgradable to 32 gigs, and a storage of 1 terabyte NVMe plus 500 gigs of SATA SSD. Whereas the Acer Predator Helios 300 comes with an Intel 10th Gen Core i7-10750H with 6 cores and 12 threads, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 with 6 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM, 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of NVMe SSD. Jumping right into the 3D modeling test, let's take a look at how these two laptops handle Autodesk and a few other programs. The G14 scores an Autodesk 3DS max score of 136.15, and the Helios 300 scores an Autodesk 3DS max score of 140. The G14 scores an Autodesk Maya test results of 158.43, and the Helios 300 scores that same test at 177.16. The G14 scores PTC Creo at 129.16, and the Helios 300 scores PTC Creo at 140. 0.64. On SolidWorks, the G14 captures a 71.36, and the Helios 300 scores a 68.6 on SolidWorks. 3D modeling was a close battle, and both laptops nearly performed at the same level of performance on every test. Moving on to motion design, I'm using the Puget Systems After Effects Benchmark and After Effects Render Benchmark. Per the charge, you can see that the Zephyrus G14 pulled slightly ahead of the Helios 300, but not by much. The Zephyrus G14 scored a 775 over the Helios 300 683. 
Things change a little bit when looking at the After Effects render test results. The Zephyrus G14 was able to put a little space between these two laptops by scoring a 615, whereas the Helios 300 was able to snag a 593. Just before moving on to the video editing test, let's take a look to see how well these laptops will perform in Adobe's design suite by benchmarking them with the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark. Both laptops perform well, capturing equally suitable middle of the charts spots, making each of these laptops a great fit for Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. But do note that the G14 was able to pull off a slightly better score, snagging a 688 over the Helios 300's 613. Now onto my favorite benchmark test, video editing. First, I'm going to start with a playback test. For this test, I'm using a nine minute 4K clip, adding some motion graphics, and then playing it back in the timeline at full quality. The full clip contains 16,177 frames in total, with 7,240 of those frames being motion graphics. The Zephyrus G14 can play back the full quality 4K footage in Premiere Pro in the timeline with only three dropped frames. During this test, the Acer Predator Helios 300 saw drop frame rates of at full quality, 62 frames, at half quality, two frames, and at fourth quality, zero frames. Considering that I was only running Premiere Pro during these tests, you may see slightly higher drop frame rates while multitasking, but you can easily switch to half or fourth quality to continue to get smooth playback in the timeline. Considering the rendering of motion design effects, I was able to render out the 7,240 frames in just three minutes and six seconds using the Zephyrus G14, and only a bit slower at three minutes and 28 seconds for the Helios 300. Both impressive times for that specific render test. Moving on to the 4K export test, I'm going to take a nine minute 4K clip, place it into Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, then export both out at 1080p and 4K YouTube settings. The G14 was able to do the 4K to 4K export out of Premiere Pro in three minutes and two seconds, and the Helios 300 was able to do that same export in two minutes and 55 seconds. For the 4K to 1080p export, the G14 was able to do that in 2 minutes and 43 seconds, and the Helios 300 was able to do the 4K to 1080p export in 2 minutes and 20 seconds. For the DaVinci Resolve 4K to 4K export, the G15 accomplished that in 7 minutes and 55 seconds, and the Helios 300 took 12 minutes and 41 seconds. For the 4K to 1080p out of DaVinci Resolve, the G14 took 4 minutes and 23 seconds, and the Helios 300 took 7 minutes and 3 seconds. Now regarding the thermal performance during the 4K video edit, you can see that the Zephyrus G14 is running at 87 degrees Celsius during the stabilized temps, and the Helios 300 is running a little cooler at 81 degrees Celsius. And here is the component usage of each of these laptops during the key benchmark tests. And if you're curious how bad the Ryzen 9 kicks the pants off of the i7-10750H for multi-core performance, here are the Geekbench and Cinebench R20 test results. Now, concerning the multitasking, a lot of people ask me, do I need all the multitasking performance? Well, that question is, how do you run your workflow? If you're somebody who is editing in Premiere Pro while also having a handful of Google Chrome tabs open because you're doing research, and then as you're running your export, you are working in Photoshop to maybe edit a thumbnail or work on a you know, design presentation of some sorts, and then you might also be listening to music at the same time, then that multitasking processor, the Ryzen 9, will be helpful for you. I do a lot of multitasking, which is why when I built my editing rig here in my studio, I decided to go with Ryzen above Intel. Um, but I will be doing a whole Intel build soon, and then I'll benchmark these two head-to-head -head and see how things perform. But nonetheless, that is the whole multitasking performance. Is it really valuable um, versus Intel, which has less multitasking performance because it has less cores and threads in the processor. If you're looking for a high performance all aluminum Ryzen 9 laptop with solid color accuracy, great benchmarks, and all of the tests performs, 
and a distinguished build quality, then I would pick up the Asus Zephyrus G14. However, if you're looking for an aluminum laptop that performs cool and fairly quiet while getting great benchmark results in Photoshop, video editing, 3D modeling, and motion design, all packed within a bright color accurate screen, then you'll want to snag the Acer Predator Helios 300. Don't forget, if you're curious about the exact pricing of either of these models or you're ready to make a purchase, head down in the description below and click one of those links. And if you do make a purchase that link, of course, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. If you want to watch more videos about the Asus Zephyrus G14 or the Acer Predator Helios 300, you can click or tap the screen over here. Otherwise, keep editing, keep designing, keep creating. I'm Benji Kaiser, and I will see you here in the next video.